Hello, this is your GP in chronic fatigue and how to talk about it. Um, I've lived with eight years unexplained chronic fatigue. I've learned a lot in that time, um, so I thought I'd tell you some of my top 10 uh, hints and tips to get the best out of your GP um, if you're living with chronic fatigue or unexplained chronic fatigue. Um, so first off, um, see the same GP on every visit. This is quite difficult in practice, um, but I think the more that you see a single GP, the more that they remember who you are and you build up a bit of a relationship, relationship and rapport with that person. Um, they'll understand the history so you don't have to regurgitate the same stuff every time. Number two, um, try not to see a locum, or that's my experience anyway. I'm sure there's some very good locums, um, but I think if you've got a long-term health problem, a locum that is in, you know, today and gone tomorrow, doesn't really have that much accountability, you know, that they... They're just getting through their day. They're getting paid fairly well for that privilege. Um, they'll help where they've got expertise, but where they don't help, where they don't have expertise, they're, they're less likely than a part-time or full-time member of staff to look into it and do the best that they can because they're, they're, they're temporary, basically. They're not there full-time. Number three, book double appointments. You have the opportunity to book double appointments. The NHS provides recommendations and guidance to patients to do that, although your GP practice might not um, highlight that fact because they are limited in appointments generally. But I think if you do have a long-term condition or if you have long-term symptoms um, or medically unexplained symptoms um, or anything mental health related, to be honest, um, it's probably gonna take you at least five minutes to just explain what the problem is, particularly if there's a history there. Um, and if you've only got a 10 minute appointment, the GP's thinking, well, I've only got 10 minutes, I can't give you you know, it'll take five minutes just to have a chat back to the patient, back to you about what the symptoms are and trying to establish what it might be. And you, I think it's quite helpful to have that another 10 minutes so that everyone has a bit more time and the GP doesn't feel rushed and actually can give you the best advice possible. Um, so four, book early morning appointments. Um, patients are late for appointments. Um, appointments get delayed or extended for various reasons. Um, so if you can book an appointment in the morning and you have a full-time job like I do, um, then, it, then they're more likely to be sticking to their time. So uh, around 8, 9 a.m. in the morning means that um, they're, they're less likely to be running late. Take someone with you to appointments. Now, I've actually not done this myself, um, but that's because of my particular situation and, and where I've been at um, when I've been to see a GP. Um, it also can be difficult if you're seeing a GP in the week um, you've not only got to take time off work, but if you want to bring a friend or family member with you, they also need to take time off work um, so the, the alternative is to go on a Saturday um, if you're both in full-time um, employment. Um, but it is helpful to have another um, pair of ears who are listening when you, you might not be able to take in everything that the, the doctor is saying or actually is just someone there to um, remind you about some of the questions that you had but forgot to ask during the appointment um, so they can do that on your behalf. And so if you have the opportunity to do that, I would, I would definitely suggest doing that. Number six, book your GP appointment online. Um, so there are two main GP systems, GPIT systems that, that are used in England and that's run by System One um, and EMIS and they both have online booking platforms which your GP practice can and should have given you login details for and if you haven't got them, ask reception for them um, and you'll be able to book appointments, see test results, um, a few other bits and pieces. Um, but the benefit of that is that you can see um, the times available, the doctors that are available and um, in your own time um, make that appointment rather than waiting on the phone for 10-15 minutes minimum um, to speak to someone and you're given you know one appointment and you're generally not told what doctor that is so it just gives you a bit of time and freedom to pick the appointment that's right for you. Um, it's worth asking reception next time you see a GP about when they release um, appointments. So they tend to release them at least twice a week. So even though you might have looked online at a certain date and there aren't any, any appointments, um, check back another time and they may well be there, um, but they weren't released until until um, later in the day uh, or little, earlier in the week. Number seven, um, write some notes to take into your appointment. Typically, if you've got a long history of medical problems, um, there's a lot to cover. Um, so having time to sift through that and have maybe five or six bullet points that really gets the nub of the issue really quickly or some of the symptoms you want to mention or some of the questions that you, you want to ask. It's really helpful to take some notes in that you can refer to so that you don't leave the GP appointment or leave the GP appointment a little bit um, frustrated that you forgot to ask something. So you've got a list, list there. 
and own your own healthcare. So I think over the years, um, particularly with my condition, um, it's medically unexplained. So there isn't a set treatment apart from some CBT and, and potentially some graded exercise. Um, you know your health if it's been going back years substantially more than any doctor will ever understand, particularly a GP who by definition is a generalist who knows lots of things about everything, which is quite impressive, um, but might not know lots about um, unexplained symptoms um, or come across that many people with, with your particular situation. Um, so um, try and, try and um, understand what you want from that GP appointment. Is there things that you've heard or you've read and speak to them about it. See them as a member of your health team. You know, how can you work with them? How can they be helpful to you as opposed to expecting them to, to basically just cure you, which they, at the moment they probably won't be able to do. And it's hard to take, but that is the reality. Um, number nine is go private if you can. Now, I know this isn't for everyone. Um, I've done it a few times, but I can do it all the time. Is, um, you know, if you've got health insurance through work, through work, so with Bupa, Vitality, um, there's lots of others, or um, you have the, the income or the money to be able to, to self-pay and pay for individual consultations privately, then I would suggest doing that because it means that you can um, access a whole plethora of consultants that you wouldn't be able to access through the NHS because either the waiting, the waiting list um, would be too long or um, typically they would just wouldn't cover the cost of referring on to someone that isn't setting nice guidelines um, so um, understanding who out how, who is out there and speaking to your GP and mentioning that point so that they can give you an unbiased view on who to see next because uh, they're unrestricted about thinking about costs and the cost of, of you going on to see lots of different specialists. Um, and then number 10, um, a blood test. Is a blood test right? Um, wrong. So um, I used to think that you have a blood test, they test you for everything and if there's a problem, they let you know what the issue is. But actually they, they take a blood sample and they test specific things um, so it's worth asking your GP exactly what they are testing and why are they testing those things. You can also ask the receptionist to print out the results and they can also be available online through your patient portal if you've got access to that. Um, so it's worth understanding, yeah, what is he testing for and why, why, why are they testing for it? Um, you'll also find that lots of other specialists outside of GPs um, will test for lots of other things. Um, but they, they, the GP wouldn't t necessarily test for that. So the ability for me to see an endocrinologist who is a specialist in hormone, in hormones um, asked for me to get um, a blood test with my GP to test for a number of different things that um, he, he sent on to the GP so that he was aware um, and they will be um, to test for hormone deficiencies. And I wouldn't have been tested for those things had I not seen that endocrinologist privately. So even though they all showed up as normal and fine, it's it's helpful for me to know that actually they are normal and fine and that's that hormone deficiencies aren't a thing I need to explore further so I can count that off my list. So so I think it's definitely worth understanding what you've been tested for and why um, and so that you're more um, um, educated about what you're, what's been tested and what's happening when. Um, so that's 10 things that I've learned over the last nearly decade or so, or so of having um, problems and going to see my GP so hopefully they're helpful and um, if you get any other questions or need any uh, yeah any questions about the tips that I mentioned then definitely um, leave a comment and I will get back to you and um, thanks very much bye bye